And then I want to talk to you about Don't Expect Salads. For sure. I love the name. Where did you you. kind of come up with that? Thank you. So I have to give credit where credit is due. I actually started the account and I called it Food of New York. Okay. Which sucks as a name. Um, And just is super basic and not really like me. But at the time... There were no food Instagrams when I started this. And it's so funny. I, I'm hearing myself and I'm like, I can't believe, like, if I'm a grandma telling this, like, there were no food Instagrams when I was growing up. But it, there really were not. Yeah. And so I was like, let me be the only food account of New York City. Mm-hmm. And so I called it Food of New York and I started posting pictures and growing, like, really fast. Um which at the time meant 4,000 followers, which was a huge deal when Instagram was starting out Mm -hmm. because there were like 10,000 users. And um, I went to an event with other foodies and my friend Andrew, who is the co-founder of The Infatuation, a food uh, review website, was like, you know, your Instagram is great, but the name sucks. And I was like, that's really mean, but... um, (laughs) Yeah, I think you're right. Um, and it had said food of New York, and then my tagline was don't expect salads. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I was like, mm, maybe I should just make it don't expect salads. And I did. And it's my friend Liz who was the one that thought of changing it to mm-hmm. the official name. And she's great. And then ever since then, it was don't expect salads, essentially. Yeah. Do you have any tips as to how you've grown it? Because the intro I referenced, it's like over 85,000 followers now. For sure. Well, you really have to commit to it. I really committed to it when I first started it. And I was posting three times a day, every day. And I was getting really good food content. Going to restaurants that were hard to get into, that had dishes that were, you know, Instagrammable. And then I kind of stopped doing that and getting like a life essentially and a normal job. And um, all these other food influencers were 100% doing that and nothing else. And they would continue to be consistent. And because of their consistency, a lot of the people I started out with, you know, we started out both at 4,000 or whatever it was, are now at 300,000. Um, and so I think it's really important to go all into something on social media if you want it to grow and obviously not complaining 85,000 is great, but it's only been growing recently because I got back into posting a lot. Um, and now I'm trying to post, you know, at least twice a day. Um, but if you stop, it's like everyone else stops too, The one thing that I would say changed is that the algorithm used to not be a thing. Mm -hmm. And the algorithm has really hurt food influencers um, because you could post the most incredible piece of content. And if the algorithm doesn't pick it up, no one will see that. And so I see food influencers who have almost a million followers getting 500 likes on a photo, which is nothing if you compare the two. Mm -hmm. And so... Although that's the case, I think you just have to keep keep on pushing and keep posting regardless of yeah that. No, over the course of like this trip, we've heard that comment about the algorithm yeah. really screwing people over mm-hmm. like quite a few times. Like it's come up quite a bit. It's crazy. So do you have like any tips though? Is like or not necessarily tips, but like in terms of your content, like how do you get fresh and new content mm-hmm. twice a day when you're posting? For sure, it's really hard, and I. I'm like such a hustler in that I have three things that, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of at all times. So I actually don't have the time most of the time to go out and eat at new places. So I'm lucky enough that I have a lot of close friends who know I do this and have been doing this. And I have friends sending me photos of their food as well. So mm-hmm. it's actually fun for my friends because, you know, they, they aren't going to post the food to their own Instagrams, which aren't food related. And I give them credit, but I would never do what a lot of food bloggers and influencers do, which is repost people's food Mm -hmm. that I don't know, that they like worked really hard to, to post. And, um, there's a lot of people within the food Instagram world that look down on people whose entire feeds are reposting, um, because it takes away from the actual hard work that people have done. And, and there's one in specific called New Fork City that is huge. And um, I 
I think it's like over a million followers and they've never, they don't take their own photos. They just repost mm -hmm. things they find on the internet. So, I mean, a lot of, a lot of accounts do this nowadays with whether it's memes or food or, you know, some people start like a couple's goal Instagram and just repost other couples and then they never have to do their own content. But I think it's really important to stick to being original. Mm -hmm. One thing I was really curious about with Don't Expect Salads is have you ever even one time posted a salad? It's a great question. So I swear to you that I've never eaten a salad before in my life. Um, not only because salads are terrible in my opinion, but I am allergic to lettuce. Like that's not even a joke. And the funniest part about that is I found out after making this account. Really? Um, yeah. And so it was almost like my body was always telling me not to do it yeah. anyway um but because you know going back to how old I am even though I'm only 28 by the way but for some reason it's just in in social media world it's old you know um when I was starting out with my food Instagram my friend Jonathan Neiman had just started sweet green and he started it with a few buddies and obviously you guys know now it's like a huge thing. I actually don't know. Is there a sweet green in Canada? I don't know. I don't think so. But you've heard of it. Yeah, I've heard of yeah. it. Yeah. So he had just started out and he was like, listen, I, I have this, uh, this salad place. Can you post one of my salads? Like, it'll be ironic because you are called Don't Expect Salads. And I was like, okay, fine. And, you know, he's a friend. And so I posted a salad and I said, I don't eat salads, but if I did, I would eat sweet green. And it was a salad and everyone was like, what are you doing? Um, but it was funny. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, with like the algorithm kind of screwing people over now, is there a time of day that you try to post for? Or does the algorithm really kind of eliminate the timing of when you post? Honestly, I... I'm so busy during the day that I end up posting a lot of the time at night before bed mm -hmm. and it's not a good idea. No. I always am like, fuck it. Like people will see it in the morning, but they won't like posting before bed is not a good idea. A lot of people go to bed much earlier. Um, posting bef between the hours of, I would say 9am and 4pm is your best bet. Interesting. Okay, because when I talk to people, a lot of it's like 7 p.m. is like prime time. I, you know, maybe for food specifically, mm -hmm. yeah. but um, if you're just, you know, a person trying to grow a per like a personal brand, everyone's at dinner at 7 p.m. most of the time and like, or have just gotten off work or leaving a workout class. So it's a hit or a miss in my opinion, whereas... The hours that I gave you, which are nine to four, mm -hmm. you can usually assume that people are sitting in an office scrolling. 